Whether you know it or like it, your life revolves around industrial chemicals. The plastic in the device that you're watching this video on, the dye in your clothes, and the fertilizer which grew the crops that became your lunch all started in the global chemical industry. It's one of the world's biggest polluters, and it's gonna be really hard to decarbonize, but there are serious plans to get it to net zero. Industrial chemicals like methanol, ammonia, and ethylene power our world. But the chemical industry is currently responsible for around 4% of greenhouse gas emissions. And unlike, say, energy, those greenhouse gases aren't just coming from a few simple sources. Today, the uh, supply chain of the uh, chemical products is predominantly linear. Take plastics, for example, the supply chain looks like this. You first extract petroleum and then produce plastics and use them. And at the end of life, you mostly incinerate or landfill them, and only 10% goes back to recycling today. At the beginning of the supply chain, when you extract petroleum, you emit CO2 and methane. Methane is another GHG. At the end of the supply chain, when you incinerate, you emit CO2. So at the both ends of supply chain, you emit CO2. It's not just plastic. Most of the products in the chemical industry have carbon in them, and most of that carbon comes from fossil fuels. There are millions of different pathways between the Earth and the atmosphere for that carbon. The good news is that there is a clear path for the industry to decarbonize and maybe even become carbon negative. In a report released last year, researchers showed how the industry can reach net zero by 2050. Well, let me pick up uh, two chemicals. One is ammonia and the other is methanol. Ammonia today is used mostly to produce fertilizers. Mm -hmm. In future, it will be used for fuel to replace uh, petroleum. If ammonia is produced from uh, green hydrogen, uh, ammonia becomes a uh, green fuel and can power the uh, long haul shipping as well as uh, some power plants. And unlike hydrogen, Ammonia is easy to liquefy or turn into liquid and carry in a ship from, uh, for example, Australia to Japan. Methanol, we believe, can replace naphtha or petroleum as the uh, platform chemical. What I mean by the uh, platform chemical is this. Methanol can be produced from so many different raw materials. And from methanol, you can produce mo today's most of them today's chemical products, and that's why the platform. Uh, methanol can be produced from CO2 or from uh, mixed plastics that cannot be recycled or biogas. In other words, uh, methanol can be produced from raw materials that would otherwise increase CO2 in the atmosphere. So green methanol and ammonia can be huge agents of change. Change isn't going to be cheap, but it's going to be much more expensive in the long run for manufacturers to stick to their current carbon-intensive ways. People will stop buying their products. Do you think the industry will be able to get to net zero emissions by 2050? I think it's quite possible. At the end of the day, it depends on how the chemical industry, as well as the government and the supply chain customers and the consumers, act together. But I think it's quite possible if you look at the competitive strategy in the uh, chemical industry. What I mean by that is today, the raw material or the petroleum is abundant, but that needs to be replaced with uh, recycled or bio-based material, which is more scarce and more expensive. Chemical industry today has a number of production plants, production factories based on petroleum, and they need to be replaced with methanol factories, for example. And it takes investment and that's expensive. Society in general is not ready to pay for the additional cost today. As a result, uh, what's taking place right now in the chemical industry is chemical companies are looking at each other to see which company, who will make the uh, first step to change their production plan to produce uh, something more expensive, but more sustainable.